The reading is Luke 41 to 48. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognise the time of God's coming to you. When Jesus entered the temple, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find a way to do it, because all the people hung on his words. Jesus was, of course, a great storyteller. He used rich and memorable parables to communicate truths about the nature of the kingdom of God, about God's love for the lost and the poor, about his mercy and about the coming judgment. But as he approached Jerusalem, Jesus is no longer telling stories. Instead, he begins to embody one. It is the great story of the returning king, the Messiah who will bring salvation to his people, enacted at the time of Passover. Jesus consciously acts out the prophecy from Zechariah 9.9, 9, which he, the people, and the religious authorities knew so well. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. The crowd are no longer merely listening, but are now participating. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed in heaven and glory in the highest, they shout. We too are caught up in the story Luke tells so compellingly. But unlike the crowd, we know where this is heading. We know that this returning King will be rejected and crucified. We know that Jesus knows this too, but that he nevertheless proceeds in obedience to the Father. And then he sees Jerusalem, and we see the heart of God. He weeps over the city, not only because he knows that it and the temple within it will shortly be destroyed, but because the people, steeped in a faith that spoke of the returning Messiah, would nevertheless fail to recognise him, that many of those who shouted, Blessed is the King, would soon be calling for his crucifixion. On his arrival at Jerusalem, Jesus heads straight for the temple. It is the focal point of the Jewish faith, situated at the heart of the city, the holy place, a sacred space where God met man, the place where sin was forgiven by the offering of sacrifice. This all takes place at the Passover, when Jews remember how God rescued them from slavery in Egypt, a rescue made possible by a sacrificial lamb. But Jesus is about to announce that everything has changed. He drives out those who are selling, not simply as an act of protest at the commercialization of temple business, but as a declaration that the old temple system is over. The people's focus should now be on him, not the temple. He is the new sacred space that they are called to enter. This was, of course, a hugely dangerous thing to say. Who on earth does he think he is? It was to lay an axe at the root of a religious system that had lost its way. And this was not lost on those whose power was derived from it. The chief priests, the teachers of the law, the leaders of the people. They, we are told, were trying to kill him. But they couldn't find a way to do it, because all the people hung on his words. The king had come at last, and nothing would be the same again.